Hey, welcome back, listeners. This is your boy Herc in the building once again. And we're here with another episode of the Come On Man podcast, episode three, season three. <laughs> and we got a special guest, one of my friends. We we met at the gym and, you know, we became, I feel like we became homies yeah. instantly, yeah. In, instantly when we, you know, started co- talking and yeah. connecting. Um, Yeah, he's uh, very faithful, very humble, very passionate. My main man, Juan, how are you doing? Good, good. I appreciate you for having me on, bro. Appreciate no, no you. problem, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how's everything? How's the Good, good, good. I mean, going back to that, whenever because I, I always saw you in the gym all the time. I was like, bro, right. this guy, because I would talk about you with my homie. And yeah. We would see you because. Who, who's that, Raul? Fabian, Fabian. Oh, Fabian. Yeah. I, I can't, see, see <laughs> I'm going to have to fix See, I messed up his name. I kept on calling him Fabian. Yeah. Uh, not Fabian. I kept on calling him uh, Raul. Raul yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I don't know if do I you, heard it at work or I heard. Know, right, yeah, I was gonna say, do you know Raul? Because Fabian and Raul, they're just so like different. Oh, okay, no, <laughs> oh, I must have met a different person. Yeah, yeah. But but Fabian, what? But we yeah we would see you all the time at the gym, and then um, I think you would come in from your work clothes. You you come in after work, and, mm-hmm. and we would see you all the time, and it's like, dude, this guy talk about a man amongst boys. Like we would see you, and it, it's just like. That's what made me like obligated to come up to you so soon because I would see you and I would see like your your persona. I guess I could just tell that it's like who you are because I, I value humbleness in all right. in all. And I would see you and it's like this guy is probably one of the most strongest people I've ever seen. But yet he carries himself so like to himself like he's not like showing showing everybody you not know? A, it, he's more so to himself just doing his own thing yeah he's not he's doing it for him he's not doing it for everybody else and i feel like a lot of people because i have another boy he's in bodybuilding he goes to the our gym too okay uh, uh i'll i'll tell you about him after the pod because i think he's actually a great person that you could have on okay yeah and um the more the merrier uh what's it called I talked to him one time because I didn't start coming to the gym until like 2021. So mm. that was about after COVID. And I really started coming to the gym because I had some things happen to me. And I was all like, the gym was like a place that I could come to. And it was like, yo, like I can just come here, mm-hmm. put my headphones on and just go to work, you know, like yeah. nothing, no, nothing too much about it. Um, and I remember I talked to him and he's been in the gym for a while. He's a bodybuilder. So he, he's been in here for a while. And I remember talking to him because I, I had met him at Gold's Gym in Friendswood. Right. That before I met him at Roman. I just happened to see him go to Roman and it was like, oh, hey, how's it going? So I would talk to him about like the uh, like the the uh, social media aspect of things. Mm-hmm. Right? And I had a friend and I, I uh, we I would travel to Alpha Land with him and we, we would work out. I mean, he wasn't a close, close friend, but he was still a friend and. He was one of my first friends in the gym. So. Right. And um, he, it seemed like every time he worked out, and it's no shame to anybody, but it seemed like every time he worked out, it was more so for, like, the pictures, the the me- the social media aspect of things, right? Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not so much of, like, himself, himself right? Mm. And that's why I had so much profound respect for you, because whenever I see you, it was like, I feel like he's doing it for himself. He's not doing it for the social media aspect of things, <laughs> right? So going back to the buddy at Roman, right? Mm-hmm. I talked to him because, you know, he he films too, but he's also so dedicated to it, right? Yeah. So I talked to him about it, and I'm like, what? how do you feel about, like, I feel like everybody nowadays has something for, like, the post or the clicks when it comes to the gym, and he's all like, he told me he feels like it'll die out, but... He feels like it it's not good in a sense for the gym because people in reality, because that's how I feel. I feel like people really should be coming to the gym for themselves, you yeah. know, not just so, hey, look at me. I'm here, you know, because mm-hmm. some people and one time I was with a buddy. He did this. We worked out for a total of like 30 minutes. Right. Yeah. And it was it was it was more so of like a like an experience, but it was like it, I don't I don't so know. So uh, basically he wanted to. He he basically wanted to experience how 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 working out feels or something like that. I mean, not how working out feels, <laughs> but it was more so like uh, he he wanted to experience the. Uh, I guess he gets his happiness from seeing the likes and seeing like the the attention, right? But yeah, the validation. Yeah, the va- exactly. Yeah, the validation. I feel 
Exactly. If you don't know Mark, I feel like that's what a lot of people are looking for. You know, it's mm-hmm. like they're seeking validation from other people and they're trying to get that means by social media rather than just Is it seeking validation from, from God, yourself, from, from God and from yourself yeah. right? and the people closest to you. Right. Yeah. Because like for me personally, dude, I could care less about a lot of people's opinions on my life. Right. Mm-hmm. But the second like my mother tells me something or my father tells me something, especially my father. Oh know? yeah. Cause it's like, he, he was the one that was with me growing up for all of my competitions, all my meets. He, he was there. Like he'd wake up at 5.00 AM, make me breakfast, do all these things for me. So it's like the validation I seek is from first God, right? Yeah. Second me, but also my father and my mother, right? Because mm-hmm. they've given me everything. So oh, yeah. It, it's like, it's one of those things where I see other people trying to look for validation from people they never met. And mm. I guess I can't wrap my head around it. So I guess I'm going to ask you, go ahead. Right, what do you think about that? Like, what do you, cause obviously you've been working out a long time, right? Yeah. So obviously like you've seen it a lot more than I have, right? Mm-hmm. Cause you've been in the, the, the world a lot longer than me. So what do you think about like how people, how social media has kind of impacted the gym and, and how people portray uh. the gym? Yeah, I, I I believe the social media had a real you know, social media has a really big impact in at the gyms. Basically, everybody uh, lost sight of what they're actually doing in the gym, and then they basically it's kind of basically like they they lost their vision or they lost their their way or direction. Yeah. So it's social media, so you know you see that people are getting distracted on their phones, getting distracted on the cameras, and trying to record, get the perfect angle or get the perfect picture after they get like a good pump or exactly, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and you know, some people they go in there for like thirty minutes, get a good pump, take a picture, throw some water on their face yeah. before they take the picture, and it look like they've been sweating, yeah. but they haven't been really doing much work. And that's kind of like the new trend or the new generation of the gym. But you still got people that still go to the gym and work out and actually yeah. try to, you know, do better for themselves yeah. and, and get, you know, elevate mm-hmm. each time they go to the gym. But the the social media aspect is really has really changed the people. It really changed their vision and really changed their their reasoning on why they go to the gym. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's it's kind of hard and sad at the same time when I see it because, you know, you you. You find some people, or you you probably find like a homegirl, homeboy, and y'all connecting and stuff like that. And you say, "Oh, this can be like a good person I can chill with." Mm-hmm. And then you start to see their true colors once yeah, you get to know exactly. them more. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, you thought they was working out for themselves, but they actually working out for the for the masses for the yeah. for social media. I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. I, I don't get it either. But it, I, 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 because I, I record myself. But I only record from my like top lips and see where I'm at, mm-hmm. and then I send a video to my coach. But I feel like for you, it's like a, <clears throat> like a, uh, how do you say it? Like a gate, you know? Yeah. Because like every time I was at a competition, right? Either like I did like swimming and track growing up, right? So every time I was at like a meet, right? If I did this time, right? Mm-hmm. My dad would all, would always record it, right? Like he was always on the stands filming, right? Right. And he was all like, it was more so of like a a, a good memory. You know, rather than just, uh, hey, look at what my son did, right? Yeah. It was rather just, and then after he would show me the videos and it's all like, all right, next time, let's get a video of you beating this. You mm. know? It was never um, showing me a video of someone else and, hey, you need to beat him. It's, he showed a video of me and I beat myself, you know? Mm. So it's like, I guess that's why, that's why, I don't know. Yeah. From you, from a point of view, it's like, that's you know, the- you do your top lifts and it's like, okay, I did this. All right, this was two months ago. Yeah. Right. And then now I'm here. Now I'm here. Yeah. You know, that's it's that's just a track of your progression. Right? Yeah. Basically, that's that's what's the true purpose of, of recording yeah. your videos is to get the get the progression videos to yeah. see where you came from when you started yeah. and where you are now, and that's what I kind of stick to. You know, I still use my I use my well, my vi- my camera for like uh videos and stuff. Like when I'm not working out, I'll be with the boys. I do like yeah. little video YouTube re- videos and stuff. But like for recording my workouts, <clears throat> I just get my top lift and then you know get it at an angle where he can see, my coach can see my depth and yeah. see yeah. if any technical issues like if my feet came up or my my shoulder came up off the bench or yeah. my butt came too high off the deadlift. He'll he'll work he'll work you know he'll work it like that on the video, because right now my coach he's coaching me virtual 
So we're doing virtual yeah. coaching right now until we meet each other in person. Um, but as of right now, I'm, I'm working by working out by myself, um, <laughs> trying to find, uh, trying to, you know, t- trying to keep it going. But I, I thank God that, uh, my, my, my progression is going up yeah. each week. I'm like my numbers are going up. It's not the same. Um, I'm making good progress. I'm making good strides. So everything's going good. The body feels good. Um, but other than that, yeah, I think that's the that's the true purpose of your recording your videos is tracking yeah. your progression. I, I feel like it's like a double edged sword, you know? It's yeah. like the there's a good side to social media, obviously, but there's always that bad side of like the good side is like there are people like you or other people that, you know, that they've been in the game for a while and they just kinda wanna spread their knowledge, right? To people who are new to lifting, right? Yeah. I feel like that's a really good thing, you know, if mm. you're trying to spread your knowledge to people, you know who are just running into the gym and, you know, maybe they need a, some motivation or some like guide on what to do. You know? Yeah. Because I remember when I first started going to the gym, dude, I was, I was clueless. <laughs> on what to do. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's how, that's how it starts. You just clueless. Yeah. You just start grabbing stuff and see what works. Yeah. So and they, b- before yeah. you start doing the, the workout programs and all that other yeah. stuff. So there is, there is definitely like a good side to it, you know? Oh. Hold on real quick. You push the microphone a little bit towards you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you it sounds like you kind of fading in and out. And stuff. Go ahead. Okay. Uh-huh. And then kind of pop pop it up. Yeah, there you go. Right yeah, there. Okay. Try it then. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, because you were fading in and out. I was like, damn, I'm, I'm <laughs> hearing them, but it's, but it's all good. No, nah, um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. The gym culture has really changed, man. It is changes. And you, you got like a few, like a handful or like a handful of people that still working out for them and they, they record too, but they recording their uh, progression and writing it down or putting in their notes and stuff like that. And then you got the other crowd. They just recording their whole life, recording all their workouts and then they barely doing, they may barely making any progress. Do you think, um, <coughs> do you think it'll like die out or do you think that's something to stay? I think it'll die out. Yeah. I, I think it would die out, you know, because it, it, it's things like that won't be consistent. It's like a trend, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. a trend, like how, like a trend for like powerlifting. Yeah, because you know people like powerlifting, they see everybody lifting these heavy weights, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, I want to do that." Yeah, and then you got all these people who don't don't have no clue what they're doing in the in the powerlifting world, and they trying to <laughs> they trying to sumo or yeah. uh, they trying to sumo deadlift or bench like something over their body weight and they haven't trained for it because you have to prep your body for those heavy lifts yeah. or those heavy, the heavy weight. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you just can't just go in can't and just willy nilly it. Yeah. So and got to build that and, up. Yeah. So yeah, you got to build it up and then you see, you just see the people just kind of just trying to just hop on the, the trend and, and see what, what happens. Cause that's what my buddy said whenever I asked him about like the social media thing, he's all like, it's a trend, you mm-hmm. know? So, and all trends end up dying off. Yeah. You know? So it's just, he just said, it's just a matter of time. Um, I think, I think people in the gym just kind of wasting space. The ones who are not actually working out. Yeah. They just, they just, they're just to take up space Yeah. and, I mean, and be, and be seen. I don't get it. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it either, but I think that's how I feel when I see people who just, you know, who just there and, and yeah. you be like, man, this dude just taking up space. Yeah. Like he's working out, but he's not like working out, working out. He's just there for his exactly. homeboy or he's just there to be in the video. So or How old are you now? Uh, I'm 33. 33, yeah. yeah my, I can't my, remember if you said 32 or 30. I'm 33, but my birthday is next month. Oh, happy early birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's next month. So I'll be 34. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be new for Sweet. me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, no, uh, the gym, the gym culture. Yeah, it's just it's just different, man. I just kind of keep. You've been, you been working out since you were a kid. I don't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. You good? You good? Uh, I've been I've been working out. Yeah, I've been working out since since middle school. Yeah, because you did. I assume you did sports. Yeah, I did. Right? I did uh football, football yeah. at North Shore Senior High School, North yeah. Shore Middle School, North Shore Senior High yeah. School. I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, yeah. so I, I did. Yeah, but I got introduced to football and working out in middle school. I sucked at football. I was trying to be the best in football, but yeah. I can't remember the plays mm-hmm. to save my life. <laughs> but it's hard, though, dude. No, it's so hard. Yeah, it is. It, it is hard. People overlook that part. They just see what's on the field. They don't. They don't see what. I guess the background ever everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, because I, you know, I was, I was good and I was strong. I was still strong, but I just 
can uh, apply with the plays on the field. And I always forget the plays. And Coach took me out like, Alvarez, you're a piece of trash. You <laughs> can't remember one single play. My yeah. I'm like, man, I'm like, Coach, man, I don't know. But, but then again, <laughs> over there at North Shore, they, they got to hold their players to a different standard. Oh, know? yeah, because yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's fine. That's, they, that's, they, at North Shore is five-star quality over there. Yeah, exactly. The whole, everybody that comes out of that school is – Top tier. Top tier, you know, compared to the rest of the Houston area. Cause <laughs> the only other school I could probably think of is Katie, you know? Katie, yeah. Uh, or the Woodlands. Oh, hey. I went to uh, Clear Springs, right? League City. Like the Clear Creek School, CCISD. Mm-hmm. Um, we had, it was my sophomore year, right? We were really good, you know? And we would beat everybody in our district pretty well. And then we beat Lake. We were undefeated in our district, right? Right. And then I remember we played Parentland and we beat Parentland. Mm. And it was a close game. And then after that, it was North Shore. So 20, uh, sophomore year, this was like 2017, 2018. Yeah. So um, I remember we, I went, I was at the game. I went to North, uh, all, I drove all the way over there. Halftime, it was 28, uh, 24. And we were all like, yo, we got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, at the end of the game, it was like 56 to 24. Yeah, we didn't score a single point in the second half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's it's, it's kind of weird like that because they kind of get their footing in to yeah. fill the players out in yeah. the first half, yeah. and then coach come in and and put a foot up in there. What it is? Yeah, it's put put insane. a foot up in there and then you know what, <laughs> and then then the, then after halftime they come out in that second half and they like a they, different they like a like, different yeah, person. They do. They. I was like. Bro, what is going on? We can't we can't buy five yards. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. The coach, the coaching, and the players, and the yeah. the the, the, organiz- the organization from North Shore is is pretty top tier, and I'm I'm kind of glad I went there and I graduated mm-hmm. from there. You feel like it helped you shape who you are now. Yeah, going there. Yeah, and like the coaching and like the I guess the culture, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the culture for sure. It, it kind of shaped me. It shaped all of us. And like my brothers, they all went yeah. to North Shore too, and they shaped them like crazy. Like, are you? The oldest or young? I'm, I'm the I'm the youngest. I'm the oh, baby. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Man. Yeah, so yeah, it shaped yeah, it shaped all of us, uh, North Shore wise. And I, I appreciate I'm I'm kinda grateful that we went yeah to North Shore. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if we went somewhere else, I think we'll still get the same qualities, but it wouldn't be the same energy. No, yeah, it wouldn't be the same. It like wouldn't be the, being there with the I guess, you know, the some of the best Oh the, the best. best. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nah, man. I, so hold on. You say you play football and stuff? I did, no, I did not. I did uh, swimming and track. That's what I did. I was always you did like swimming. A, yeah, I was always a I guess a cardio king. You know. Okay. What, um, I guess it? that's why if I want to go back to it, all throughout my high, all throughout school, I started swimming when I was ten. I started track in about uh, the fifth grade. Mm-hmm. So all my life, right, cross country track. All my life, I was just cardio right yeah. it was never lifting weights you know i rarely ever lifted weights so right um in 2020 right covid hit yeah. so um i was a senior in high school i was supposed to graduate that spring and mm-hmm. then that march um we went to spring break and then we never came back right right so that was my senior year of high school and um i had stopped swimming there was no track no no swim practice no nothing like that so um and I also did water polo too, yeah. so that was another big thing. It was always just cardio, burning calories, all all sorts of things like that. So I always had a really big appetite, right? Because I was burning all these calories, right? And um, I I guess that appetite stayed with me, you know. So it never left. Mm-hmm. So I started to gain weight, you know, in the wrong ways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and I didn't start, this goes back to like, you know, people tell me things, but I, I don't, I let it slide. You know, it's not until like my dad or my mom tell me something that I'm like, okay, maybe I really should you mm-hmm. know, start getting locking down on this. So it wasn't until my mom and dad started telling me like, Hey, like you're gaining a little bit too much weight, you know? So then I started going to the gym and this was about like the back end of 2020. Mm-hmm. So about after the summer, cause here in Texas, everything about opened up around like May. Yeah. So I started going to the gym more often. Um, I wasn't too, like I started going into it. It was like three days a week, twice a week. I, w- I went to the LA fitness in uh, by South shore. Okay. So I was, I was at the gym, but I wasn't like, I guess 
totally in, you know, like I had one, one foot in one, one foot, foot out, out. Yeah. you know? So, um, and over about like six months I had some progress, you know, but it wasn't crazy, you know, cause I was, I was going, but I wasn't, you know, like th- two days, three days. And my diet also wasn't the craziest thing. Cause like I can go to the gym, but the hardest part is the diet, dude. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the nutrition, the diet, <laughs> yeah, it's the something. Hardest part. Yeah, it's something, something serious, man. So, um, <laughs> I fast forward to about 2021, about February. Mm-hmm. So I've been going to the gym for about like six months now. Oh, damn. Um, to this day? Or are you dead? No, like... no, no. So fast forward from 2020. Oh, to, shit. Yeah, yeah. To okay. Like February 2021, okay. I started going to the gym, right? Go ahead, my bad. Um, and this kind of goes back to like, Cause I feel like, I don't know, for me, maybe for you, it was, you know, you grew up working out, you already had that establishment, but I didn't. Right. So Mm -hmm. I always grew up, you know, running, swimming, track, all those things. Um, but I needed something new, you know, to kind of replace those things. Some, I guess something new to see myself, like push myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I go to school and like I work, but I never value those things as like pushing my my physical barriers, oh, you know? pushing into your limits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't get, I didn't seriously get into the gym until, um, I had like a bad, like breakup with someone. So mm. that's what like really like got me into the gym. So oh, I, yeah, yeah. The, you had one of them breakup, uh, workouts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like, dude, I mean, it was bad, but like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, after, after that, man, I was like, dude, you was locked in. I was. Damn. I was. I'm not going to lie. I was. And I mean, like, I feel like it's dumb to say it now, but it's like, dude, I went to school. I would go to work, but it wasn't, none of those places were like doing it for me, you know? Yeah. Like none of those places, like whenever I would go to the gym, it was just like, bro, I can come here, clear my mind, put my headphones on and just go to work. Oh yeah. You know? So it wasn't. That, yeah, that's, that, like that's, your, that's like your second office. That, that was like, I don't know. It was like therapy in a sense. I don't know oh, why, yeah. but it was in a sense because it's like, I got to see myself grow and get better. Mm-hmm. And then also after that, I was so much more dedicated to the gym. So I was all like, the progress I made in that six months, I made that same, I doubled that within like two to three months, you know? So, Damn. um, Okay, but it, it got to the point where I overworked myself, mm. and I actually, I actually had, um, I don't know what the doctor said. That he said leaking fluid. I leaked fluid out of my forearm because I overworked it so much. Mm-hmm. So I literally, I thought it was like a nerve or something, but I literally couldn't move my arm. Oh damn! So my arm had to like, and every time I was at work, I all. It was especially when I like reached down for things. Mm-hmm. I was like, it was just the sharpest pain ever. Like if I were to scale it, it would be like a nine out of 10 easy. Damn. And so every time I was at work, I would always just grab something with my right hand and just, you know, transfer it over, transfer it over with my left hand. You yeah. Know? I always use my right hand and I was like that. So I couldn't work out at all. Yeah. And I was like that. That happened like maybe May mm-hmm. of 2021. And I was like that for about four months. Is it still, still? No, ready? no, no, no. Is now it, now it's good. Now okay. it's good. Um, but I, I couldn't work out for like four months. So I was like, dude, Damn. it sucked, but it didn't really, I think it needed to happen because I was able to grow myself in other parts that wasn't the gym. You mm. know, like I was able to, I worked a lot more. Mm-hmm. So I was able to get a lot more money. Okay. Um, I focused more on school. So I was able to get better grades. So I don't know. I'm one of those people that I feel like it all happens for a reason, you know? Oh, yeah. And I'm good now, you know? Like, I'll lift now, and I'm good. But I look back on it, it's like, dude, the progress I made from, uh, like, 2020 to, 20, like, that four-year span is insane. You yeah. Know? So that that's, that's how I got into the gym. But um, now, I mean, now I would say goals-wise, mm-hmm. I want to, first and foremost, I, I just want to grow my faith, right? Okay. That's the biggest thing. Second, graduate. Dude, I'm, I'm. I don't know, what I'm you, just, what you going to school for? I'm here in school, but I don't know what yeah. you're going to school. Are you, like, is high school, or just like college? College, college, college. So I go to UH right now. I, okay. Um, what you, what you becoming, a doctor or what? I'm trying to become a pharmacist. So in a sense, a doctor, yeah. Damn, let me nah. find out you about to work at Walgreens. <laughs> no, 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 I'm playing. No, that's just that's a soup. I, I want to, I mean, I want to go down, because there's two paths. I mean. I can, um, I graduate in the fall, right? Okay. So 
I would apply to different schools, and then I have four more years of school after that. You okay. know, pharmacy, right? So, yeah. um, am I excited for it? And in a sense, yes, because I'll get to meet a lot more people. Yeah, a lot, lot more networking. I'll go yeah, exactly, yeah. And um, I personally want to go down the route of like, there's two routes I want to go down because there's many different pharmacy routes that you can go down. You can go down a retail pharmacist, work at your local HEB, right? Mm-hmm. You can work a hospital pharmacist, work at your local UTMB or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But there's also like the business side of things that um, I'm working on getting a minor in business mm-hmm. and that'll help me, right? Right. But if, and in that way, you can kind of create your own um, lines of how people get their medication and that that leads to a very successful um if you can pull it off yeah it leads to very a lot of success but for me if it's either that i more so just want to be a hospital pharmacist because for me i i was thinking i always want to be a pediatrician right right because growing up i um i was i would teach kids like because i have swimming i swim at uh, such a high level i would also teach right right and I taught in, I started teaching in middle school, you mm. know, so, um, I would, I would always work with kids. Yeah. I always loved working with kids. Right. Mm-hmm. So growing up, I wanted to be a pediatrician, oh, okay. but, um, come to realize medical school is too much for me. I'm not it. Cause it, as opposed it, to pharmacy school, it's four years, but then there's clinicals and then there's residency. So it, it's, it's a lot more that goes into it. Right. Um, they, the, the people don't see the, the background work. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of background work. Um, I've always had like a need for like what, cause there, there's always like, um, people say that women are much more attuned to people and men are much more attuned to things. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why you see like a lot more men that they become engineers and a lot more women, they become like maybe nurses. Right. Yeah. So, for me, I don't know. I'm. I guess I differ from men in a way that I always care for. I always cared for the people, right? Yeah. So that's. I wanted to do something where I can see that I'm benefiting someone out of it. That's, okay. That's always what I wanted to do. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah. wrong. You know, there's nothing wrong to be. You know, God's uh, servant and yeah. serving the people. Exactly. And yeah. you know, you know, finding finding ways to help them and benefit them. Yeah. Or benefit their life in any type of way. That's that's that. Yeah. I, yeah. I I went to college and stuff. Uh, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in 2018 with uh, occupational safety. Oh, really? Yeah, but I work out in the plants and stuff, yeah. so I'm slanging and banging the uh, pipes and hand, you know, hand using yeah. hand tools and climbing towers and. Yeah, but that that's a serious job. I mean, but it's, yeah. all, it's also a very you know, hard laboring job. It's yeah, a very uh, but that, hard that, laboring, but it also. Uh, a very like suffice job like yeah it, it definitely it's, it's pretty it's pretty chill and it, it kind of fits my 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 criteria of what i do because I'm, I'm i'm really a hard-working person yeah and i i like challenges and stuff like that and it kind of gives me the same concept like i get into at the gym because yeah. i'm moving i'm moving heavy stuff i'm doing this doing that and then when I get to the gym, I'm ready to like I've been doing that for so long. It's your, it's I'll, I'll warm up. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically like my <laughs> warm up for the gym. And all I got to do is just got stretch yeah. a little bit, and then I get to going. Yeah. And then people are like, man, Herc, how you do it, man? You in here for three hours? You just work a sixteen hour shift Dude. at the job? Where, where are you getting the energy from? I said, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's <laughs> just in me. Yeah, <laughs> I just get pre workout in me, and I'm good, yeah. man. You yeah. know, it, it's. You know, I don't know. You know, I, I feel like it's a blessing that yeah. I have to. I can I can find the energy or use the pre workout to uh, get the workout in. Yeah, especially by myself. That stuff is hard to do. Dude, the, working out by yourself. I think people like. I think people definitely take for granted working out with someone, mm-hmm. dude. Because I don't know what it is, but when I work out with myself, I'll push some weight. But it's like whenever someone's there with me, I'm just like. I don't know if it's the competitor in me or like if it's I don't know. What I think it it's is. the competitor. It's just like Cause. I see them right there and I'm just like and they're talking to me. I'm like, yo, <laughs> when by myself, I didn't know I had five more in me with someone else. It's like I'll push 10 reps of something with some with yeah. by myself. But it's like when someone's with me, it's like oh, I got another eight reps in me. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, I think it's just the 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 the, the kind of accountability. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, people there and then they, y'all can push each other to like a whole nother level. I could still push myself to a whole nother level by myself, but it took a minute just to get there. Yeah. Cause I knew I normally used to go in the gyms with, with a, with a crew, like, mm-hmm. like my coach and my yeah. homeboy, but everybody doing their, everybody's separate right now. So everybody's doing their own thing. It, um, I have to find a way to still get it in, in at the gym and at the same time do it with the same energy. Like I said, was there like a, like my crew was still there yeah. with me. And, and I, I found a way to do it like that while I'm still doing it by myself and yeah. things like that. And it's working out. It's working out. So now, you know, I, I got the same energy, but I'm doing it by myself. But I talk to my homeboys on the phone like, hey, I'm doing yeah. this and that. So it's uh, it's all good. It's all good. So they all live, I guess, like everybody kind of. <clears throat> yeah, everybody's kind of distance. Home. Like I got my coach. He lives in uh, in Louisiana. Oh, and yeah. then my homeboy, he just uh, he just moved from Austin. And he just oh, really? can't. He just came back to nice. to Houston, so. Uh, but you know, but we're all we're like super busy and stuff yeah. with our lives. So we're we're still going to the gym, but we're like it's hard to make the time to link yeah. up and stuff. Every, yeah, everybody's busy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all it's all good though. So I mean, man, I was talk, talking about that. What's up? Um, I for me, right? I'm 22. Okay. I've, I've had the same friends literally all my life. It's like. And I don't have, like, a big group of friends. It's only, like, I always keep, like, four or five, like, good close friends. Right. But it's, like, I don't know what it is now. I mean, at 22, do you feel like you were with your friends a lot more or a lot Oh, less? I still got my day one friends from high school. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> well, I, speaking, speaking of that, yeah, I got my I got my day ones, my day, my day one homies from middle school. Uh, to, and we're still friends to this day. Yeah. And my wife, she's like, she's always mad. She's like, man, I don't have friends like that. You like, you're like, she's like, you're blessed to have yeah. friends from high school to now, because you know, you know how high school is. Y'all be friends in high school, yeah. and then y'all go to college, and then y'all just kind of not hear from each other no more. But now, like, we all went to the same college, or we all stayed like in town. Oh, you know? okay. So we were always, we've always been with each other, but. Uh, one of our friends, he went to school in Colorado, right? Okay. And he was kind of the one that, like, kind of, like, the pace setter. Like, yeah. he always, like, made the plans. He always um, well, set, the planned, tone. set the tone, planned everything, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so he went to move to Colorado, and we haven't really talked to him, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, now it's, like, they have girlfriends now, right? I'm single, right? Mm-hmm. I've always been single. I'm not really attuned to... At least right now in my life, I'm, yeah, it's not really a thought in my mind. To uh, how's the how's so speaking? Yeah, speaking of dating, how's the dating world right now in today's age? Oh, uh, is it is it good or bad? What, what is it? I don't know because I'm married. I mean, so I, mean I, I heard it was kind of rough. I heard ten, it was kind of rough. I, ten years ago, I mean, like I feel like social media has really that's another double edged sword. Social media. I mean, like I feel like it's really kind of perplex people to compare their lives to other lives you can't do that so i think because back then when there was no social media right like in the 50s or the 60s mm-hmm. everybody everybody knew each other and it was such like a close um relation right yeah like my dad would find someone that maybe he went to school with or maybe lived on the same street as him or the same thing with my mom right mm-hmm. there was no like a social media aspect of you have, let's say you have a girl, right? Let's mm-hmm. say this girl's in front of you and you see her and you like her. Yeah. And then social media comes around, right? Mm. And it kind of gives, now you don't just have this one girl in front of you. You have every girl that has a social media account in front of you. Mm-hmm. And you start to compare this girl that you have, who could be a very pretty girl, right? Yeah. Or in a girl sense, a very pretty man, right? right? So you have... Now, instead of just having this one girl or this one guy that you see, you have options, you have all these other people that you're seeing. Right. Yeah. And you start to compare this girl or this guy that you're seeing in real time to this one girl or this one guy that lives completely across the street, like the nation or the street. Yeah. That's cold. So you, instead of seeing what's in seeing what you have you know you kind of start to think more so oh but i could have this right right? instead of seeing this girl that's in front of you that's you know she could be pretty you start to think of oh well this girl that lives in california or 
in Washington DC is much ten, ten times the girl that she is. You yeah. Know? So why should I settle for this girl, or in a girl sense, why should I settle for this guy? Right. When I can go out and I can find someone that's you know way more fitting of what I want. You know. So I feel like that's that's kind of the bad thing about it. And, and, that, also, and that's how the dating world is right now. Well, because because with women, right, and because with men and women, right, a mm-hmm. lot of men in the end, a lot of men from the ages like 18 to 23, mm-hmm. they, they kind of just want, you know, the sex. Yeah. But women gatekeep sex, right? Yeah. Women also gatekeep relationships, I feel like. Yeah, like, they do. Like boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like whenever you get to an older age, like maybe 28, 29, that's when men start to like really establish themselves because they've probably been working a job. They probably have a steady income. Mm-hmm. They've probably done a lot from 20 to 30 to yeah. really shape who they are, you know? So that's whenever they can start to be the ones that it's like, Hey, I have all this for myself. I think it's time that I settle down and I find a wife. Right. right. But early on, like my age, 21, 20, 22, a lot of like young men, they don't really have, they're still trying to like find their way, you know? And I feel like that's also for women. Women are also still trying to find their, find who they are too. Yeah. Right. But in the world that we live in now, that a lot of, uh, how do you say it, um, hookup culture, mm-hmm. right? Hookup culture is like a really big thing, right? So hookup culture means sex. So yeah. who gatekeeps sex? Women gatekeep sex, right? Yeah. So men, that's that's like the big main thing that men want. There's Obviously there's women, you know, young girls, young men that are looking for a relationship, but girls also gatekeep who they date. And, yeah. you know, but I'm not... Um, obviously everybody, you know, if you like someone, you should date them. If you don't like them, you shouldn't, you know, yeah, but, waste, yeah, waste your time. But most of the time it's not a woman going up to the man. It's always the man going up to the woman. You know, yeah. I've talked to countless girls that's like, she likes him. She tells me that she likes him. Mm-hmm. Um, but the next thing that comes out of her mouth is no way in hell I would ever go up to him and <laughs> talk to him. He needs to come up and talk to me. So it's like, that's just how it is. Yeah. So they got they got the, they got like dating apps like that. Uh, yeah. It's called Bumble. Bumble yeah. Tinder. Yeah. That's how. That's that's what yeah. Bumble. I mean, that's because Bumble. That's how I met my wife. Uh, I met her on a dating site on oh, Bumble, really? and I think Bumble it, it it forces the woman to interact with you first, the man first, before y'all can start a conversation. So 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 so, so basically, so Bumble was like how it works. You you set up your account. You you do swipe left, swipe right, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, like Tinder, Tinder. Like yeah. Swipe. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they have the blue check mark to let you know that they're, they're legit. Mm-hmm. And then once they got match, the the woman is the is the first the woman is fir- is the first one to start the conversation. Yeah. And then once oh, the one, okay, and once the woman starts this conversation, so then, okay, so if y'all both match. Mm-hmm. It's like Tinder in the sense that y'all both match. Yeah, she she got to start the conversation. Like, yeah, okay, okay. She has oh, to well, start. Cool. Yeah, she has to start the conversation off first mm-hmm. before y'all start. Not and so it's not you not you're not starting off. She's yeah. starting off first oh, after, yeah. after y'all match, and then that's how it goes from there. Mm-hmm. And then if y'all link up, and then y'all good, and then y'all yeah. get in a relationship, married, and that, that's, that's it. Off off to the sunset. You know I, what I'm saying? I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think now a lot of like especially my age, a lot of people are writing off the dating apps. Mm-hmm. I think they're good, and I also think they're. Also, there's also it's like social media in a sense. They're bad and they're not bad. Like I had a Tinder account, and I, I can't tell you the amount of times I'd seen it. I would see a girl, and she would like promote her Instagram, like follow me on Instagram. It was never. It, it's like her intentions were never to find someone. It was just to like promote herself. You know, that's, that's all they do. Yeah. It's promote themselves on different sites, like from dating to Instagram to TikTok, yeah, to YouTube, whatever their sites, link LinkedIn, yeah, you know, job the job, uh, you know, link LinkedIn the job sites and stuff, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's all they're doing is trying to promote their stuff so people can come to their to their main account, yeah, so they can boost up their followers and their likes yeah. and things like that. And then you know you got the other sites and like OnlyFans yeah. and shit like that. So that's that's a whole nother episode for another day. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> now, so what? So what's your so what? So for, as of right now, what is your thoughts in the date about the dating world right now? 
right now, I feel like it's it's trash. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad because <laughs> um, there's obviously you can find someone that is very good moral because that's me, right? Good moral because I went out with a girl and she was younger than me. I'm uh, I was 21. She was about like 19. Mm-hmm. But from what I what I had noticed, right, and what a lot of people have told me is, oh, you're very mature for your age, and I appreciate that, but I also didn't start to notice it until I started going out with, like, someone that's younger than me. Mm-hmm. And it's not like she was crazy younger than me, too, you know? It's just a two-year gap. Yeah. But I would see, you know, the way they would act, and it's like, she was very pretty, though, yeah. you know? And that's what one of my boys kind of told me. He was all like, bro, she's, like, beautiful. What yeah. do you, like, what do you mean? Like, bro, if you don't want her, then... <laughs> I'll do something about it. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It's like, well, um, so what? What was the issue? She was the just, issue was just she was very immature. I damn. feel like a lot of, um, I feel like a lot of people, like especially my age, right? Like they're just kind of focused on getting their fun out. You know, that's yeah. why men, when they're older, that they start to mature more, and men, women too. But women mature at an earlier age. Yeah. But at my age, like from 18 like you're getting out of high school mm-hmm. to like 22 it's like you just want to do what's fun to you right. you know so dating somebody for a long time is being locked in a relationship is really what is kind of playing a lot of people's mind cuz being locked in a relationship means that you probably can't you have to sacrifice a lot of things that you don't want to sacrifice right. you know like maybe spending time with your friends maybe planning trips you know Mm -hmm. like if i like if (laughs) there's always that meme of like you know your girl went on a girl's trip to miami you know (laughs) how would you feel about that you know right so i think women and men like once they they're they're just trying to find themselves and they're just trying they're they're not focused on having a long lasting relationship rather than just having a short term you know their sneaky link or their you know the uh, hookup culture. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I feel like that's the that's the I think that's all they that, that's all they want for the people who are not serious about you know serious yeah. long term relationship or marriage or things like that. You know, yeah, it's fine to get your fun out. You know, you know, at, at twenty two, yeah. twenty one and up, like by like twenty five, twenty nine, you you know you start to want to kind of slow down or whatever. But they got some people still out in this world that's still doing you know still still trying to be like still running around in them streets. Yeah. Like they're young and do the sneaky link and things like that. <laughs> it's, and then, fun, it's funny you say that because I uh, there was this one girl at our gym. I talked to her, dude. I thought this girl was like twenty one. Mm. I thought, girl, I was like, yo, this girl, I, I wanted it. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. So, um, I talked to her and um, she was. She told me she was 28 years old. I was all like, she looked 21. Oh, damn. And um, I talked to her. Obviously, you know, mm-hmm. that's too old for me. It's It just is, you know. Yeah. Um, but she would tell me because she's single, right? Mm-hmm. She's 28. I think she's 29 now. Um, she had told me she we would talk and um, she would tell me about how like the dating market at her age, it, a lot of like immature guys and it's just like a lot of immature guys that are just looking for one night stands. You yeah. Know? So it's like I thought that was something that Mm-mm. was just me, you no. know, my age group. You no, know? no, it, it keeps going. It keeps yeah. going. And once you get older, it keeps going. And you got like a a hand, like I said, a handful of people who serious about relationships, yeah. and they got a the other handful that's not serious about a relationship. They just want to have fun. And that that's her. She's super serious about it, you know, because. <laughs> I feel like women, whenever they get to an older age, they start thinking, especially if they want to have kids. Oh, yeah. You know? If they want to have kids, it's like they start like thinking, okay, if I have a kid at this age, mm-hmm. I can't have another kid. I want to, because they have everything planned out. I feel like, I don't know, men, they just kind of find someone and then they settle down. But women, they like, especially if they want to have kids, they plan like everything in yeah. advance. That's what I got from talking to her. Because like she would talk to me about like she wants her last kid at like 42. 42 you know, so i'm like damn and i guess i guess i guess she worries you know that like she's 29 or like any woman you know whenever they hit those late ages they just start to worry like um like time's running out for them no you know? it, that it is it is running out you know and, and and women trying to do everything they can to 
get pregnant and have a kid. Yeah. And then once they have that one kid, they're good. Mm-hmm. And then they decide if they want to have another kid yeah. and all that other stuff. But yeah, they got, they got, they got, you know, they got some women that that's like you said, 28, 29, you know, 30, 35, yeah. you know, in their forties and sixties, single and, and, and not married, not in a relationship, just out here, just single. Yeah. You know, and you don't know what it is. You don't know if it's them. You don't know if they found bad people or vice versa. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 there's a lot of questions but in the air. To to but to really <clears throat> dial down on the question mm-hmm. of what's wrong with dating, I I would truly say it's like the internet and social media. Because yeah, they come to the comparison, the comparison, it's and then the, the social comparison media. of like you know because. Look, my dad met my mom when I, in like 80 or no, like late 70s, early 80s, right? Mm-hmm. And before that, he he obviously had like a girlfriend before that and uh, she had her boyfriends before that. But before that, it was, I just met this guy. Um, you had to put a lot more work into a relationship to see someone back then yeah. uh, compared to what you do now. Like now I can see a girl on Instagram. I can just slide up on her story, DM her. Mm-hmm. But back then my dad was in the Navy. He had to go to a pay phone to, and spend 50 cents to call my mom for, you know, 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, so there was no smartphone. There wasn't no Blackberry. There was the house phone. And whenever my mama would pick up, she would be like, Nancy, you know, Wilfredo's on the phone. Here you go. And they talk. There wasn't uh, FaceTime. There wasn't, you know. Facebook. Facebook, Instagram. There wasn't none of that where you can just call someone at the click of a button. You yeah. know, it was. like the, Especially like the, the friend aspect. You want to go see your homeboy. Yeah. You have to get on the bike. If, yeah. if you don't have a car, you have to walk. Dude, that's, it, that's how it was when I was in <laughs> elementary school, bro. It was you're like. You're not going to do it. Hey, hey. You want to come outside, throw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Miss Johnson, is Johnny home? Yeah, no, he's exactly. not home. And you're like, exactly. damn, now you got to. Yeah. But now, now you you can see, like, oh, Johnny, he on social media. Yeah, and, exactly. you know, it's so easy. I see what you're saying. Yeah, so back then it was like you had to put a lot more work into being with someone, you know, and that went a long way. And I feel like also today and age, everybody's so much more exposed to not only, like, different women, but they're also exposed to, like, so many different things, you know. And I feel like it plagues a lot of, especially young men's mind. I feel like it plagues a lot of their minds, you know. Like, Mm. you can't go on social media without... Social media nowadays, I look at social media, especially Instagram, Mm -hmm. as, like, a a soft porn, you know, in a sense. It's, like, men are so intrigued with looking at this rather than, you know, being with someone real. Yeah. So... Men, women have their issues with dating, but men also have their issues with dating. And I yeah. feel like it's wrong to put, because I feel like a lot of guys put the sole blame on women, but dude, it's it's men and women too. Yeah, yeah you, know? it, it, they, they, you, you got to put the blame on both fields. You, you can't, you can't. You, you can't uh, put it on one side. Like, yes, women are the gatekeepers of sex, but you can't um, judge a woman, but you also can't. Uh, say to the guy that's ran through 10 different women, you know, like, good job. You know, that's not, no. you can't, you know, you got to hold them to the same standard. You yeah. know, it's not, it, it doesn't make any sense, you know. No, that, 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 yeah, I see what you're saying and stuff. And, yeah, I don't I don't know. The dating, the dating world is, yeah, something serious. I can see that it, I feel like it's kind of corrupted. Yeah, 100%. It, it's corrupted and, and, and a lot of people, like I said, they're, they just walk in, in darkness. It's corrupted by people. They're just... <clears throat> they're, they, they're hoping for a life better than the life that God has given them. Yeah, you know? like stop, stop. Because, 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 uh, yeah, you know, because like, it basically, they, like you said, they're comparing their their life with somebody else's somebody life. Somebody else's life, and all they're doing is, is killing their progress. Yeah, at, at that moment, looking at them like, oh man, I wish I had my life like yeah. his. Oh, I can wish I had my life like hers. You know, she's got a million dollars. She's yeah. living in a mansion. And like, and you looking at your life, you're like, man, my my life is pretty good. There's no life that's there's no life better than the life that's yours, right? You know? So there's always gonna be a nicer car than you that you drive. There's always gonna there's always gonna be someone with a nicer house. Yeah. So there's always gonna be someone with a nicer, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think I think more it, beautiful it, woman than you, or a more handsome man than for a woman. So yeah, I think it all bo- I, I think it all boils down to it. Just you just gotta be grateful for what you got. Exactly. 
You gotta be grateful. I like man. I drive man. I drive a 07 GMC Sierra, hey, and I, I it's, it's, it works. I, I get from point A, point a to point, point B. That's what my dad <laughs> says. He drives a like a. <laughs> Uh, 2010 Shit. Honda Civic, and, it's, it's, but it's paid off. Yeah, it's paid off. It's, it's man, paid off. all you man, if you get an older car, that car you're driving right now, as long as you take care of the maintenance and yeah. everything, It'll and lie. change your change your oil, change all your tires, and make sure the interior is good That's and fix it up. Said. It'll man, last me forever. It'll last man. you forever, man. You ain't gotta like, pay for another car. That's you what you my dad said. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to get a 2025 no. truck or Toyota. Exactly. With, you know. You good what you what you got because getting you to work, you take care exactly. of it. You know how it runs, and you know you can. And then you got to your uh, mechanic and stuff like yeah. that, and you're you're good, man. But everybody feel like they got to get the next new thing. Like that's 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 the dude, new era, I know, dude. I know. Like I know. oh, I gotta get the next. I gotta get the. <laughs> I gotta get the next new iPhone. I gotta yeah. get the next new uh, uh, freaking uh, Ferrari or uh, Bugatti or whatever. For I, me, the only thing that I um. It's like the next new. It's like yeah. the next new thing and stuff, and that that's not that's not the way. If you if you take the time and appreciate to appreciate the things that you got right now, like all the stuff that you bought and you worked mm, hard for, yeah. it, if you appreciate, you know, I appreciate my house, I appreciate you know the equipment I have, mm-hmm. I appreciate my yeah. life, my wife, my, yeah. my my family, my marriage, my you know me being a father to my son. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty I'm I'm grateful and then me being grateful and then giving that to God, God's blessing me in, in, in many different ways. Yeah. You know, it may not be the you know, I'm not looking for money or fame or things like that, exactly. but he's ble- he's blessing me in different ways that exactly. I never thought I would, you know, look at in a you different know, uh, for me, I never really <laughs> saw what he's blessed me with in life until I was like at a low. And it's not until you're at a low that it's like Yo, I have all these things because in the Bible, it says when you're anxious, be thankful for everything that God's blessed you with. Mm-hmm. And there's a science study that says anxiety and um, gratitude cannot coexist in the mind. Right. So tell me how a book that was written over 2000 years ago is saying what scientists are proven in their studies now, you know, so that. That that that's that, but yeah, my dad would tell me the same thing. He's like, "Take care of that truck, you know, because it'll last you a while." Yeah, and man. I, I I don't see myself getting another car. I mean, no. I've never always, I've always never really been a man, big you, car man, guy you, though, too, though. No, you, yeah, you like the car you got right now, man. You you take care, <laughs> just take care of the maintenance part. Yeah. It's gonna last you a long time, man. You don't have, don't worry about what people say. Like, oh, you're not, you're not driving a new car. Like, <laughs> nah, it's working. Dude, some of them are. I mean, now they're not jealous. But some of them are jealous. It's like, because I mean, it's a nice car. I like it. It's yeah, a Toyota Four. Hey, some people nice they they man, some people they drive these cars. They drive that shit to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> they drive that shit to the ground, and then they stand outside looking like, damn, what's going on with the car? And they have yeah. no clue. Yeah. You, you know, you know, they have some people they don't know how to change a tire. They, I they need, to, I need to learn. Yeah, man, it's learn. it's so simple, bro. It's so simple. You gotta get you a good jack, get you a good uh, uh crossbar. And then just turn off the nuts yeah. and stuff like that. You jack up the car first, and then you you yeah. like you, well, I'm, I'll reverse it. You loosen up the nuts. Once the nuts are loose, then you jack up the car, take off the nuts, take the tire off, take it to the tire shop, or put the donut on there, mm-hmm. and then put the nuts back on, tighten it up, yeah. make sure they're tight so they don't come loose with because the the tires have a lot of vibration yeah. when you're driving, and then you tighten it up real quick. And once you tighten it up, then you drive it to your tire shop, get the tire fixed, yeah. and then put your back tire back on. It's it's it's, it's really simple, and yeah, but a lot of people don't know how to do that. Yeah, they start to freak out and call their parents <laughs> like, "Dad, I don't know what the mom." Yeah. I don't. And then you Help know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you, you yeah. know that's and that's some that's some life uh life that's some life lessons for life skills that you yeah. need to learn. And even if you get a new car, it translates. It yeah it, it, yeah the, the each car is different. It's not the same. Yeah. And so the car, the truck you got right now, and you get another truck, it's gonna have a different model, different body, different style, yeah. and then you gotta relearn everything about the car. And it's like, nah, I'm good. Nah, yeah. <laughs> this one's paid off. Yeah, how's, man. Yeah. How, so how's your how's your how's your faith with God? How's everything with him? So I always grew up in the church, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it really started with my grandmother. Mm. Um, she had lost her father whenever she was young in a car accident when she was like 25. 
Okay. My grandmother was born in like 1936. Um, she's still kicking out. She, okay. You know, God's blessed her with a long life. Shout you know? out to grandma. Yeah. For real. Um, but yeah, I always grew up in the church. I was born in 01. Um, and I, my family lived in Jersey and they moved here when I was born. Yeah. So um, we found this church um, in Leak City and I've been there all my life. I got a baby dedication there. I got baptized there. Okay. And, you know, I grew up there all my life. I was baptized when I was like 11. Mm. So, but I never really grasped it for what it was. It was just kind of a thing that my mom woke me up on Sundays and we would just go, you know, it was, I never really like really understood it for what it is. It was just something like, oh, okay, it's Sunday, Sunday service. Let's Mm. go. You know, Um, it wasn't until I was 18 and I kind of started, I was like, okay, I don't want to go to church (laughs) straight up, mom. I don't want to go. And at first she was all like, as long as you live under my house, you'll live by my rules. Right. Right. So she was all like, you're going to go. And then COVID hit and then nobody was going right. Cause everybody was just at home. Yeah. And it wasn't until after COVID that it was like, I guess she got kind of a little bit softer and I was, I was older too. I was like 19. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, whenever I said, no, I'm not going, like, I don't want to go. It was, she just kind of let it be. She let, she let me do me. Right. Mm-hmm. That I, I start, I stopped going, you know, and this wasn't too long ago. You know, I'm 22 now. This, this was three years ago. So I stopped going, but what I started doing mm-hmm. was I started to try to replace what only Jesus could give me with other things of the world. Right. Maybe right. it was through a girl or maybe it was through something else, you know, mm-hmm. really it was through girls. That's really what it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I always found, I found myself at a like dead end, you know, in like when I was like 21, I found myself at like a dead end. I was like, you know, none of this is satisfying me. You know, it Mm. satisfies me in the short term, but in the long term, it just leads me to like a, like a minor depression and more so of like a, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with what this is giving me. Mm. I feel like I should be satisfied, you know, but it's not, you know? So I picked up, uh, my Bible one day and I started going back to prayer. I, I wasn't going to church, but I, st- I started getting back into things. And I really felt like it wasn't until I started going back to church and I started going back to church about like six months ago. Yeah. And that's when I really, it was like whenever I walked back into church, I felt like a sort of like comfort. Mm. I don't know how to explain it, Okay. but it was like a, a comfort of like, whenever I walked in there, it was, it was like, Everything that was plaguing me in the world, mm-hmm. whenever I was outside of those doors, it like it just completely vanished. Mm. It was like a comfort of I can come here and I can just be safe. I don't know. It was like I was safe, you yeah. know. And that's that's when I really started to get closer to God because I was like, dude, I'm over here looking for everything that the world can give me, but it just everything that the world gives me just leads to a dead end, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. just gonna lead to a life of sin and it's just gonna lead to a life of corruption. Yeah. And I don't sin leads to death, yeah. you know? So I start I got I really got back into church and I'm glad I did, you know, because I wouldn't be the man that I am now without my faith. Oh yeah. Know? So I guess for me now what I, what I like to do now is I like to put God in first in everything that I do. You okay. know, I'm in my prayer more. I'm in my Bible more. And it's, it's more so of just like a relationship with Jesus. You know, it's, yeah. it, I come to him and I really grasp him for who he is. He's a friend, a teacher, you know, yeah. a, a therapist, you know, a mentor. Mm-hmm. That's everything that he is to me, a father, you know? So for me now it's more so, Okay. I, I know what I need to do. I'm not perfect, right? No. You know, but nobody's perfect. I also see other people that they're going through the same thing that I'm going through, that I've been through. Mm-hmm. So who am I not to tell people about the good news that has saved me and that has delivered me from the sin in my life? You yeah. Know? So you try not to gatekeep the God's absolutely if, not God's absolutely wisdom. Not. That, you want to sh- ex- exactly because. <clears throat> the true true wisdom is the fear of God. That's mm. true wisdom, you know? So I feel like a lot of people, they go throughout their life, especially at my job, there's a lot of people that are, you know, very lost in what the world has 
yeah. come to and what the world thinks they, is they've been con- they've been consumed with the the with the world what the world thinks is okay you know but god says a different thing you yeah know? so it, it's it's a matter of don't judge don't judge people right because i'm a sinner too you oh, know yeah um yeah, everybody, uh, there, I'm a sinner as well, so it's, yeah. it's all good. So, but go ahead. I'm there, sorry. There's a there's a story in the Bible of um, Jesus is preaching at the top of a temple, right? Mm-hmm. And a woman who committed adultery comes to the top of a woman, top of the mountain, and she's she gets on her knees and begs for forgiveness. And at that time, a woman who committed adultery is they're supposed to be stoned yeah. to death. You know, at that time, it's it's like a that's just how it was. Mm-hmm. So everybody that is listening to Jesus preach at this time, they are, they're plagued with like judgment, Mm -hmm. you know, and they, uh, everybody grabs a stone and it's like, she needs to be stoned for what she's done. Mm -hmm. And, um, one thing he says, he says, anybody who is out without sin, throw the first stone. And this, this story always gets to me. It's always this one. And then him dying on the cross, you know? This one always gets to me because it's like, if anybody is to judge that woman, you know, it's him, you know, because he lived, I don't know, may, if you may believe in Jesus, you may believe in someone else, but I believe in Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I always want to tell people about it, but I never want to push anything on to anybody. You know, everybody has free will to believe or say whatever they want, you know? Yeah, they were saying that Jesus was the perfect soul. Yeah, so yeah. He, he lived a life that was literally perfect and if anybody in that room was to throw a stone at this woman it's him you Mm -hmm. know because he lived a life without sin and he lived a life without you know without any like corruption or any like i don't know but it it just gets to me because he says this to everyone yeah but and then everybody leaves right everybody's (laughs) like okay all right, whatever. We'll we'll just leave because <laughs> none of them. They all know that they, they have sinned in their life too. Right. So, who are they to judge this woman who sinned, even though they're a sinner themselves? You know, that's being a, that's hypocrisy. Yeah, as a hypocrite. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, it, it gets to me because he says to this woman, "Go on, your sins are forgiven, and you know, go on and live your life." Right. And he shows like so much compassion. He's so compassionate. And at the same time, if he wanted to, he was the only person in that room that could show judgment on that woman, you know? Mm -hmm. But instead of doing that, instead of him, you know, going to the judgment route, he, he chose the passionate route and Mm -hmm. the, the, the route of love and kindness, you know, Mm -hmm. and that people do have a second chance, you know, and that nobody's perfect and that in him, you can find, you know, true, true love and true grace, you know? So that always gets to me, dude. And it's the one um, uh, of him on the cross, right? He lived a perfect life, but yet he suffered like the ultimate, you know, back then dying on the cross was like the ultimate, you know, like uh, like nowadays you have the death penalty, yeah, right? Back then that was like the biggest form of crucifixion and embarrassment, you know? Mm-hmm. And a man that's lived a perfect life that he's done nothing but heal, preach, and, you know, show love to everyone. He's now paying, you know, the ultimate price for me, you right. know, even though, you know, it says in the Bible as he was getting whipped it, that he thought about us and that the healing, you know, mm-hmm. and this, this one really gets to me cause he's, he's on the cross. Right. And, he has, he's innocent. He's the perfect, like perfect, you know, but there's two people on his side or one person on his left and one person on his right that they're both getting crucified. Yeah. And they, they're human just like me and you. Well, they're all human, you know, Mm -hmm. Jesus came down as a man. Um, but they were sinners just like me and you. And, um, one of them said, one of them kind of mocks Jesus, but the other one says, he says that he knows what he's done and that he deserves to be on that cross for what he's done. But he says to Jesus, you uh, you know, you don't deserve to be here. And he says to him, uh, please remember me whenever you enter your kingdom. And Jesus looks at him and he says, truly, I tell you, my friend, you, after this is done, you will be with me in paradise. Mm. And it's, I don't, it's so, when I'm alone, I cry about it, dude. Because it, it really touches my soul that it's like, he was all he all he wants is you know 
a relationship with us, you know, yeah. because that's that was his whole thing, you know. In the end, he says, before he dies on the cross, he says, it is done, you know. Mm-hmm. His, his death on the cross to save our sins is done, you know. Yeah. And then he rose again on the third day, and that's what Easter's about. And, but that... That that's what really like drew me in because I would read about these things because like I said growing up and I grew up in the church but I never was really like okay I never really read the Bible I went to Sunday school but it was yeah. they always taught like verses and whatnot but it was I was never really like uh, into it into it into it it wasn't until now that I was like at a dead end in my life and I was like yo uh, this isn't working out for me mm-hmm. that I really started to turn to him and I started to read the Bible more and I started to hear it read the stories and the teachings of what he did. And that's when it really started to hit me that it's like, you know, and I feel like nowadays, you know, cause you're either Christian, you're either, okay, people can do whatever they want, or you're either like, you don't like Christianity. You right. know? And I feel like the people who are in the camp of like, they don't like Christianity. I feel like they are lost in the sense of, they don't understand what it's really about. You know, right. they don't understand like the relationship of Jesus and what it's about. And that in reality, what it's all about is it's not about judging you because I can't judge you. I'm a sinner just like you. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't come to you and say, you need to pay for what you've done because Mm -hmm. I myself have probably done something just as bad, you know? Yeah. So it's about showing love and kindness to people. And, you know, maybe in your love and kindness, you can lead people to the cross just as, you know, in Jesus, how he showed love and kindness to people, it led to their salvation too. Because um, in the Bible, it says there's a rich man. He comes to Jesus and he says, uh, I think it was a rich man. You can't quote me on it totally. But he's, he, there's a man. He comes yeah. to Jesus and he says, um, what, um, what are the two like most important things that I must do? You know, And he says, love the Father with all your heart, soul, and mind. Mm-hmm. And then second love your neighbor with all your heart, soul, and mind, you know? Mm. So it's not about um, if someone's done you wrong or if it's not about if someone has hurt you, mm. you know? It's about showing love to people no matter if they're rude yeah. or not rude to you. And, you know, that was one thing I really, that really woke me up because I had a problem with, like, a lot of people in my life, especially, you know, someone that's done me dirty, you know? Like, yeah. maybe it was, like, a, a girl in the past or a relationship in the past and they, they did me really dirty. So Mm. I always had like such trouble with like coming to grasp of every time I saw this person, I could just think of just, Oh my gosh, I cannot stand. I hate you. You know, like I can't stand looking at you, but now I come to grasp with, um, everybody's not perfect. Did they do me wrong? Yeah. But I'm not, I can't hold on to that grudge. Mm -hmm. You know, I gotta, I have to, forgive them, you know, because if my father in heaven forgives me for the sins that I do and I, you know, I sin, you know, um, we all fall short of the grace of God. Who am I not to forgive this person that's done me wrong? True. You know? So that, that's, that's a big thing with me. So that, that was one thing that I really had to come in terms with, you know, because, you know, some people have done me really wrong, you Mm -hmm. know, but I have to, I have to find it in the heart to forgive them. And now I, I do, you know? Yeah. And, um, I feel like I wish nothing for the best for these people, you know? Yeah. 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 Because Jesus says, um, love your friend, but he says, love your enemy, you know? So even, even if that person has a grudge on me, yeah, he's saying, you know, love your enemy. So your enemy is a person that has a grudge on you. Yeah. You know, if they have a grudge on you, you should still love them, you know? So, uh, I can't, I can't hold anything. I'm tired of like holding things against people, holding grudges, yeah. you know, stop holding grudges and find it in your heart to forgive the people that have done you wrong. Yeah. And in that, I think you'll find peace. peace. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That was, <laughs> that was good, man. <laughs> hey, I just let you vent, man. I was like, dang, he's doing some good stuff right now. Yeah. No, nah, man. Um, in, in, a, in a sense, like, do you have any advice to give like, somebody else that's in a in a space of uh not not a space but like in a in, a, in i've probably got the thing now i lost my train of thought basically do you have a, a advice to give somebody um a man or a young man or, or just men or just the masses 
Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, do you do you have advice to give them if they're lost as well, of how to reconnect with God? So, I would say you it'll hit you, you know, because it hit me right. Mm-hmm. I was you know doing my own thing, and then I realized that it I was fooling around, and it just led me down to a path of just. And I got nothing out of it, you know. It just led me down a path of like shame, yeah. You know, whether your path is shame or whether your path is grief or whether your path is depression, you know, maybe he saves you out of something, you know. Yeah. Um, if you're lost and you want to get back with, you know, Jesus, I, I always, I never like push anything on anyone, you know. Mm-hmm. I always let it come to them. So I would say. I would tell them about it, you know, it's like me, you know, if you're dealing with this, you know, I would ask, you know, can I pray for you? You know, yeah, that's the first thing. And if they say yes, maybe they've never been prayed for, you know, maybe this person has never heard of Jesus or heard anything about it. They ne- maybe they didn't grow up in the church like me. Right. But I would say, you know, maybe let me pray for you. And if they say yes, then I do it. And then it that's like planting a seed, you know, and maybe they'll think about it and maybe they won't think about it after we, uh, like leave, you mm-hmm. know, like leave past. So then whenever they go on their own path, maybe that seed will start to grow. Maybe Jesus will do something with that. But he's he's with those that are that are brokenhearted, you right. know. So I think everybody comes to it in their own way, mm-hmm. and but also in their own way, maybe you or maybe me, you know. That someone told me, what if, uh, what if that person, what if you're what if you're the way that that person finds Jesus? And if I am, then good, I'm going to do what I can, you know, but it's up to them to really, I can plant the seed, but it's up to them and it's to, to grow it, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's up to them to find a church, you know, pray, go to the Bible. It's up to them to really form that relationship, you know? That's I, I, I mean, I think it, going back to the question, like, well, how do how do you, like how do lost people like get close to it? I think it all starts with like a like a wake up call, you know, because mm-hmm. that's what it started with me—a wake up call. Yeah. So that's what I would say, you know. Maybe maybe, maybe maybe their wake up call is you know their boyfriend dumped them or their girlfriend dumped them. Maybe their wake up call was they got fired from their job. Maybe their wake up call was they found a guy on the street preaching. Maybe mm-hmm. their wake up call was you know and their life is collapsing. You know. Yeah. And I think everybody has a wake up call. You know. And he has a way of drawing us to him. Mm. And even even if you've never met him, even if you've never heard about him, yeah, he has a way of drawing us to him. You know, so. okay. I appreciate that. Why I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Shoot, yeah. I hope, listeners, I hope you made it this far. <laughs> I, I hope you ain't sleeping on us, and you know, yeah. you having a good time with this episode because I'm having a good time. Good time with yes, this sir. episode. <laughs> nice, juicy organicness going on. Uh, yeah, listeners, yeah, if you have any issues or problems or situations that you're dealing with, you know, you know, it's okay to go in a room by yourself and pray and talk to God exactly. and build a connection with him. It's okay. You know, you know, we all, you know, got skeletons. We all are sinners. We all got issues. And like, he, like Juan said, we're not perfect. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. So, nobody's perfect. So if you got any issues, man, to get reconnect yourself with God. Pray it up. Do what you need to do to move on to the next level with the connection, with the relationship with God and, and go from there. Yeah. <laughs> what else? So I felt like we talked about this. Dude. What about your, what about our, our upbringings? Like the upbringings as. I mean, yeah, my upbringing was like church. So I always grew up. Um, I grew up in a nice neighborhood. You know, I'll be honest. I grew up in a nice neighborhood. I was blessed with what I have, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but yeah, my upbringing was, you know, church on Sundays, um, meets on competitions on the weekends Mm -hmm. and just school throughout the, the, um, and how did, then how did all those things like shaped you for who you are today? Well, meets shaped me to be like the, cause I'm a, I don't know what it is. I'm a competitor. Okay. I'm a competitor. And I guess that has really shaped who I am, but, um, what has shaped me is obviously my faith, my mom and my dad, especially my dad, because, um, I took it for granted for what it is now, but I said it earlier, my dad was always with me at every like competition, you know, Mm -hmm. he was, you know, 
he was my like number one supporter and i i never um under like really saw it for what it is until i grew up and i wasn't going to competitions anymore you know so um he always paid for me to go to the camps at the universities mm-hmm. to get the best coaching so yeah your dad he, hooked your dad hooked he, you up yeah he wanted he <laughs> he want he wanted me to succeed and he but also, he wanted me to do what I loved, you know. Oh, if I up. wasn't loving something, he was all like, he was for me changing, you know. And whatever I changed into, he backed me 100%, you know. So, like, I swam for so many years. But yeah. then I kind of took a layoff on swimming to do water polo, you know. He he swam all his life. So, swimming was, like, the number one thing for him. And he did track, too. So, yeah. that was, like, the number one thing for him, too. So, it was, like, whenever I kind of backed off those two things and I started doing water polo more. Mm-hmm. He still backed me 100%. He was at all the competitions, all the meets, you know. He gave me advice on anything he gave me advice in. So it was like no matter what it is, no matter what I did, he always seemed to be a 100% supporter in that. That's good. And my, I'm not saying my mom wasn't, you know, my mom was always there to feed and, you know, nurture and raise <laughs> us, you know, but my Shout out to mom, man. <laughs> Shout out to mom. My dad was a uh, he was the one that really, I guess, shaped who I am. You know? Sound like sound like your dad made like a huge impact into your 100%, life. Hundred percent, hundred percent, absolutely, hundred percent. Damn, that's what's up, man. That's what I'm trying to do with my kid right now. Yeah, kind of just being everything that he does and just being his life and let him know that I'm there. Yeah. So and you know I know it's gonna take time for him once he get older and he start get the understanding like oh damn dad yeah you know supports me and everything like how your dad does yeah that's the kind of the same concept I want to do for my for my son mm-hmm. and everything that I do you know there, there's always a purpose uh, for everything that I do like when it comes to when it comes to personal stuff. Uh, marriage stuff, yeah. uh, fatherhood stuff, career, uh, family things like everything has a purpose. You know, uh, passion projects, things like that. Uh, they always has a purpose. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Uh, there's, there's always a ish, there's always a a purpose behind it. Yeah. And so that yeah, man, I, I really respect you know what what your your dad did for you and yeah. how he shaped you for who you are as a man today. How old is your kid now? He's uh he's eight. Eight. Yeah, he's at, he's about to be nine in December, nice. and then I'm I'm getting older myself, so I'm trying to stay young. It's, yeah, it's time to try, try to stay young forever, <laughs> you know. But uh, now nah, my upbringing was good too, man. My family has been like a big supporter. Uh, well, I I think we're kind of like a late bloomer family, mm-hmm. you know. A lot of people found out the things that they were passionate about in yeah. a, in a later later times in their years. Or their life, mm. and then they they found it, and then they just took off with it, yeah. you know. And it's a it's a lot of things that uh, you know a lot of people are passing. Like my my third my first oldest brother, he's like a he's like a doctor. Uh, he's like I think he's he's like he's a, he's a doctor and a administrator or something in California. My brother, he my third my second oldest brother, he's uh, he's working in self owning business, like shipping business and oh, things really? like that. Don't he that's, like he like. Dope. Yeah, he like worked for himself. Then my third oldest brother, he's working in like media stuff, like cameras, photography, yeah. video, podcasting, whatever, whatever you know, like information you need to know about your technology. Yeah. He he's like the tech tech whiz of, of of the family. And then here comes me. I'm finally getting into what I like to do: yeah. the the YouTubing and recording. And podcasting and all yeah. the different and photography too. So yeah, I'll kind of find my what things I like to do, yeah. and so it it, it balances out. But my my family, my mom and my dad, they were really they were tough on us. They were pretty strict, mm. but they were they they were like strict and in a good reason. Like hey, if this is what like how we like like anything we like to do, like football, soccer, yeah. or just anything we want to do. He's that they were like, hey, this is what you want to do. We you, we don't want you to do it and back out. You know, if you're gonna do it, go 100 percent in, yeah, and finish the season out or finish the the project out. And if you don't like it, switch it to something else. Mm-hmm. So they always gave us that 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 grace period. But we had to whatever we started, we had to finish it before we move on to the next project. Yeah. So you know, our bringers were really nice, really good, and we had no issues <clears throat> for sure. So. What um, what what about 
other thing we talked about too, too, but uh, I'm going I'm to just throw it out there. What about the young men in the many, uh, did we talk that at the beginning, the young, the young man and their many issues? Yeah, I think, um, I feel like we hit that. I'm going to go back to you because you found something that you loved, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go I ahead. I feel like young men in their many issues, I think they're, a lot of them are trying to find themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of, cause me, I'm not, you know, going back to relationships, I'm not looking for a relationship cause I'm trying to find, you know, yeah, what it is that I want, you know? So I think a lot of young men, they need to kind of dial down and find themselves, mm-hmm. you know, and find out what they want to do. Cause so many of them are lost, you know? Yeah. So is that how, when, what, what are ways for, for us the you know older male older male than younger male that like kind of that knows our direction where we're going in life how can we how can we help them or if you have any way to give advice to them how how can you show them the way so obviously there's a lot of distractions in life yeah, you know yeah. social media is a big distraction but also tv anything that is kind of wasting your time is a huge distraction you know um <laughs> I don't know if you know who Andrew Huberman is, but uh, I think I heard of that he, name before. He, he he's a doctor, and um, a lot of men nowadays, he says, are in like a in a dopamine um, slump. Mm. So when that meaning is, they are consuming all these things at one time, like TikTok. You can scroll through and just scroll and scroll and scroll for hours, and TV. You can just watch TV for hours. Video games. You can play video games for hours. Me, I've Personally, I have a problem with video games. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm a game freak too. Yeah, so I'm, you, I'm a you're gamer, not. I can't lie. You're not. You, <laughs> hey, hey, uh, you're not alone. You know, I'm a game freak. I play games for yeah. to the to at night, and then I'll look back and it's morning time. I was just, <laughs> it's just crazy. But one thing he says is, um, a lot of men nowadays, especially young men, are in like a dopamine detox. So, um, there was this one guy in. This credits to Andrew Huberman because he was the one that um, talked about this on his podcast. But he talked about this one uh, man, he one boy, he was like 24, 25, um, no job, uh, not really doing anything. He's not um, a comp- accounting to much, you know? Yeah. He's just kind of at home. Wasting, just, wasting, wasting space. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what he did was he did a dopamine detox. And in other words, uh, a fast, right? Like in um, religion, people fast, like maybe they fast like meats, but a fast can be anything, oh, yeah. right? It can be anything that is, because a fast is supposed to be something that is like something that takes a part, a big part of you, you yeah. know? So to get closer to God, that's what a fast is. You know, you sacrifice this to get closer to God. So it may be, oh, I sacrifice social media. I sacrifice all um, things like that to mm-hmm. get closer to God. But what he did was he did a dopamine detox. So what he did was he did no phone. He did no games. He did no TV. He did um, none of that. And uh, Andrew, Andrew Huberman, he, um, he went back on it. And in a month, the kid was at the gym. He had a job. Um, He went, he got back in school. Mm -hmm. So, I think a lot of things that are plaguing men nowadays is just a lot of distractions, you know, okay. it's so easy to get distracted because I can easily pick up my phone right now and just slide up and go to Instagram and then just scroll <laughs> as long as I want. You yeah. Know? Or when I get home, I can watch a TV show for hours on end, you oh, know, yeah. and f- in one day that may not seem like a lot, you know, but if you do that over a course of time, mm-hmm. that's, before you know it, a years went by and you haven't really accomplished anything, you know? So I think what a benefit a lot of men is, you know, try a dopamine detox, you know? Okay. Try and clear your mind and try and really focus on how to better yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. Are you bettering yourself by scrolling through TikTok for hours on end? Are you bettering yourself by, you know, watching this show that you love or playing a game for hours on end, you know? Mm-hmm. What... Because when, for me, whenever I started accomplishing things, Mm -hmm. that's when I really started to get that like good feeling of like, yo, I just did this, yeah, you know? And whenever you start chasing that, so whenever you start having like goals, whenever you start having um, priorities that you really fulfill, Mm -hmm. 
that's whenever um, you start to put down all those other things and it becomes like a chain reaction. You oh, know, damn. it's all small steps, you know? Yeah. Maybe your first step is you read five pages out of some book, or maybe your first step is you go run around your block. Maybe your first step is you go to the gym. Mm-hmm. And then after that, because keep in mind, we're talking about someone that isn't really doing anything. After you do that, you get that feeling of like, um, I just accomplished this, yeah. you know? So it's like, and then now that let that spark a chain reaction. So build on from that, you know, mm-hmm. instead of going one mile, now you go two miles and then let that, let that spark into, okay, I'm going to the gym now. And then let that spark into, oh, I got a job now, you yeah. know? And that leads to so many more things. And as you go through your job, you work hard. Maybe you get a raise. Or get you know? a promotion. You yeah. know? And, like, maybe <clears throat> the less time that you're playing games or on your phone because you're on your detox, you can't you can't do those things. You can do you maybe, can use that time for more productive things. For more productive things, exactly. And maybe you're studying more. And mm. now that you're studying more, you're getting a better grade. You yeah. know? So maybe now you see that you got a good grade and all this time you've been getting terrible grades, but now you see for yourself that you can do these things. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is just, you know, eliminate the distractions, eliminate the distractions, detox your mind from everything that's distracting you in this life. You know? So I think that that's a big thing for men, you know? Yeah. One, I would say, you know, if, if you're lost, you know, try cut off any smartphones. They're good, but they're bad. You know, cut off anything that you feel like is, taking up and wasting your time. That's what I would say the first thing you do. Mm -hmm. And then after you've done that, after you cut it off, you're sitting here and you're all like, okay, I have all this time. What do I do? Go go on the internet, start searching for jobs, you know, yeah, make some, make some money for yourself. You know, Mm -hmm. if you're in school, use that time instead of scrolling on your phone to, you know, just read. True. Um, David Goggins once said, cause he's dyslexic. He says, um, it's hard for him to read something, you know, cause he's dyslexic. But, um, if you can't read it, read it again, read. If you don't understand it the first time, read it again, read it as many times as you need until, until you, you understand, understand it, it, you know? Mm. And if that's not getting to it, write it out, you know? So yeah. he says these things and it's like, you know, you have so much more time on your hands to do these things now that you've cut off all those other things that are taking up so much time in your life, you yeah. know? Okay. So, Damn. That's what I would say. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, Juan. My man, you yeah. boy, you like a damn uh, uh, therapist over here, man. For real, you you coaching me up. No, no. For real, man. Um, yeah, man. Uh, so, so I know this is a crazy question. What's your favorite movie? <sighs> Spider Man Homecoming. Spider when, when Sp- it came Spider Man Homecoming okay. came out in twenty seventeen the first Tom Holland Spider Man you know Tom Holland yeah I know Tom yeah, Holland. yeah the first one that one was so good I okay. don't know why because maybe it was because I was in high school at the time okay yeah like, mine's mine's is uh Gavin's Guardians of the Galaxy oh which well, one all all three of them <sighs> the first the the first one is my favorite one but my my wife said the second one is her favorite one I like the second one you saw the third one yeah I saw the third one that third one was just, just yeah. a roller coaster man yeah. I was I was going through I was crying in that movie yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my wife saw me crying for for rocket cuz I thought yeah. he was about to die yeah. and but I was going through it but other than that man um shit. what's it called hang on uh do you watch sports a lot or no I watch sports yeah, yeah. I Would watch you- it you ever do like a sport podcast that ever come across your mind? No, I never no, thought about a sport. Really? I don't. I don't have the. I don't. I'm not the patience, yeah. but I, I I could talk about sports, but I just have to get the, the right information before yeah, I just start yeah. talking. I can't be like, oh, such and such did this point, and my 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 information is yeah. wrong and off uh off track. Yeah, Bro, me, wanna, me and one, me and a couple of my boys, we we go at it. Y'all go at it, it on the it, sports. It becomes like a debate show. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. I, I I try to I try to do it, but I'm like, nah. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm just this right here. This is what I'm doing. You're good. I'm yeah, doing you're good I'm, here. Hey, yeah. I'm doing a man's podcast, man's only podcast, mm-hmm. giving them a platform, yeah. yeah, to come on and you know be yeah, and talk and and, yeah. and be themselves, man. Yeah. So it, it, it's helpful. So uh, how do you, how do you feel about the what, what how do you feel about mental health? For men, um, what's your what's your what's your what's your what's your, pers- what's your perspective? What did your perspective look like uh, towards mental health growing up versus now? 
growing up, I never really thought much of it. But um, when I was 18, I, um, no, when I was seven, no, when I was 18, Mm -hmm. I went through um, this really bad depression, really bad. It was like I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. Um, I always had like this emptiness inside. So, and the depression, depression and anxiety are linked, right? So, with oh, the they're de- the same thing. Yeah. W- mm. Well, they're linked together, right? So, with the depression, also came this like overwhelming of anxiety of like, am I ever gonna? G- I always had this fear in my mind of like, am I ever gonna, you know, go back to normal? You know. Mm-hmm. Um. But I persisted through it, and I, um, I would talk to God about it. And in all honesty, that's, everybody says I'm really mature for my age. That's what really perplexed me to be so mature for my age was going through that, you know, mm-hmm. going, cause it was hard. It was really hard. It, it hit me like a truck too, dude. Yeah. And at such a young age, I was like, why am I going through this? You know? Mm-hmm. So, um, now don't get me wrong. Like I'm at that time. Right. I think one thing that a lot of people do and like a lot of men do is like if their life is going good, right. They kind of, and they're going through, maybe they're going through something. They kind of start to compare their life to others. They say, okay, I'm going through this, but someone in a third world country is probably going through something way worse than me. Right. But we can't do that. We have to, if you're going through something, you have to take it on with everything that you have, you know, Mm -hmm. you can't just play it down because someone else is going through something else. Everybody's life is different. Okay. So if you're going through something, you have to, you know, attack it head on. You have to take it for what it is. If it's plaguing your life, you have to, you know, you have to get it out because it's just going to come back, you know? So that's one thing I would say is never play down your problems, you know? Obviously, don't be a drama queen, you know, but <laughs> never. if you're going through something, yeah, don't be afraid to vent. Don't be. And dude, this is crazy because I was going through that depression stage of my life mm-hmm. and it lasted for like two weeks on end. And um, my brother had gone through the same thing because um, he had uh, a breakup with his girlfriend. Right. Mm-hmm. And he had he was away in school. So he had really nobody except his friends. Mm -hmm. And it was not until he was with his friends that over time, he kind of started to find himself again and really grow from that. And dude, um, one day, um, my brother come and I wasn't going to school because I was so like out of it. I could not go to school. Like I remember I went to school and I was like, come pick me up, please. Like I cannot be here. Oh, wow. And um, my parents weren't there. My parents were at a graduation for my cousin. And I remember my brother says to me one day, hey, let's go to the beach. So we went to the beach, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I remember just being in that moment that I'm like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to go. Uh, I'm just sitting in the car and I'm like, dude, I just want to sit at home. I don't want to do anything. Like, I just want to lay in my bed, you right. know? Because I felt so tired. I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't swallow. Like, I drank water, and I threw the water back up. Wow. So. It was that bad. It was that bad. But we went to the beach. Um, I went outside, and uh, we just threw the football around, you know? We just went to the water, talked. Dude, it wasn't instant, right? Mm -hmm. But as I was in that moment, and as I was leaving, I started to feel, you know, myself kind of start to come back and we went to go eat pizza and for the first time I actually stomached some food you know and over the next few days I started to really find myself again you know yeah and I think I guess I don't know God does crazy things but he also created a beautiful world that we live in you know so I don't know if you've ever seen like the vastness of like you, maybe you go to the beach, but maybe you go to like the grand Canyon or anything, but it's like, it's such a beauty to see these things. Right. Mm -hmm. We're so trapped in our world of our, maybe our house, our TV. We're so locked on these things that, you know, just dig us in a deeper hole. Yeah. But it wasn't until I went outside and I experienced the beauty of the creation that God has made. And, you know, spending that time with my brother that I really started to, get a 
like cure myself, you know? So I would say if a man's going through something, don't, don't lock it away. Um, find someone that you love, Mm -hmm. um, and go out and explore nature. Okay. I don't know why, but whenever I did that, it was like a switch in my mind that it just, it, it really fulfilled me, you know? Right. So maybe the cure for mental health, mental health isn't just, you know, coming to God and, you know, spending time with others. Maybe it's literally the world around you and nature, you know, because that's what it was for me. I went to the beach and I was like, dude, why? It was literally just a switch in my mind. And over those next few days, I really started to find myself. And over the next few months, that's when I really started to grow too, you Mm -hmm. know, to grow because what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? So yeah. it was over those next few months that I was like, dude, like I really grew from that, you know? Granted, it sucked. Yeah, it sucked. But it that's one of the things that really shaped who I am now, you know? That's good, man. So yeah. if you're going through any man that's going through mental health, don't see it as um, a punishment or a something that's plaguing your life, but see it as something that, you will get out of and because you'll get out of it, you will grow from it and you'll become better than you ever are. You know? Yeah, man. I uh, appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm writing, I'm trying to like write stuff down <laughs> for key things and yeah. stuff. Yeah. No, nah, man. Though, though, yeah, that, that's yeah, man. Pre- yeah, once again, appreciate you Juan, yeah. for coming on the come course, on man podcast. Yeah, yeah, appreciate you for having me. Yeah, man, and this is some, this is some good good juicy stuff, man. We had like an hour and forty minutes, man. Really? Just talking. It does not feel like that. It doesn't feel out of it. Yeah, man. It's uh, the, so. With a uh, what's the what's one thing or yeah what's one thing that you are deeply grateful for right now? Right now, let me think. At this moment, let me think. Oh, go ahead. Do you think? Uh, so obviously, I'd say God, right? But. One thing I'm truly grateful for right now is probably my dad. Okay. Probably my dad. Cause I need need to meet your dad, man. He sounds really dope. I like him because my dad was so connected with his dad. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember my dad picking me up from school one time I was like in the second grade, my grandfather. So his dad had had two strokes. Right. Right. And fine. And, uh, God bless his soul. The second one had finally, you know, laid him down, you know, and he passed away. Yeah. And I remember my dad picking me up one day in second grade and he was crying. He told me, and that was the only time I ever saw my dad cry. I had never seen my dad cry other than in that moment. And as I grew up, I never really thought much of it, but it wasn't until recently that my mom really started to tell me about who my grandfather was to my dad. And, um, I'm really starting to gauge that, that my dad is who he is because of his dad. Yeah. And I am now who I am because of my dad. So he really took everything that his dad, um, the good and the bad things, and he really um, tried to shape who, me and my brothers, you know? Yeah. So it would be my dad. It would be my dad because, you know, he was he's given me everything in this life, you know? Well, obviously God has blessed me with everything, but he's provided for <laughs> us you know yeah and that's because his dad did what he did with him you know so my dad didn't grow up in a so good situation you know yeah Um, but but he found a way but he found a way because his dad pushed him you know he's all like you want to have a family you need to do these things you know and my dad was so connected with his dad you know so um there's a saying uh because going back, he didn't grow up in such a good situation. They're just saying it's like uh, hard times make strong men. Strong men make weak times. Weak men make hard times. Or, or yeah, yeah. Strong men make, uh, strong men, I forget what it is. No, like you good. Strong men you... make uh, life easy, right? Yeah. He didn't have life easy. You know, he had to work for everything. So he had a hard life, but that made him a strong strong man, man. Mm. you know, and he's given me a good life, but he's also made it to where like, Hey, you have a good life, but you're not going to be a weak man because you have a good life. Damn. You know? Okay. You're going to work for what you have and I'm going to hold you accountable for what you have. You know, like he's paid for school. He's, he's given me everything in life. He's, 
he paid for my uh my visits, you know, whenever I would go to camps at different universities, he's paid for all these things. He's paid for the best coaches in the area to coach me. Yeah. So, and in that, everything I learned from those things that he's put me through, through like swimming or track or going through all these different things, that's also taught me, you know, things, you know, for him sending me to those things that what I gained from those wasn't just a workout, you know, it was also a shape and character, just like how, whenever you went to North shore, it wasn't just about, you know, Hey, we're going to beat the crap out of this team on Friday night. You know, it was all, it was a culture that shaped those guys, you know? So he, he put me through the best situation that I could have and that best situation that I could ask for, because uh, I have only one life and everybody has their own life. And I'm, I'm glad that he put me through what he put me through, you know, and he's still in my life and he still will be in my life. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. He's and, not, that, that, he's and, and that's, that's, and your dad is the person who made you super grateful for what exactly. you got. He's not, he's not, um, not perfect, but neither am I, you know, so. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Woo, man. This is some good, good, juicy stuff, man. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know, man. I just, this is some, I, I'm speechless right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good conversation, man. I, we, yeah, we, it's we, fun, though. I like it. I, I like, I like it, too, man. And I, I appreciate you for opening up, yeah, sharing yeah, your stories and everything that you do, man. And I always give people the opportunity to give some positive affirmation or some positive yeah. energy for the listeners yeah. to take with them as they're done with the episode. Uh, and what uh, positive affirmations do you have to give to the listeners? To take from? Um, I would say it seems like everything in this world is falling apart, right? It seems like every day you look on social media or you look on the TV and it's like something new as crazy has happened. It's like fear and anxiety are just plaguing everything. But yeah, look, keep, keep your friends and your family close, you know, trust in God, trust in your faith, you know, love everyone just as you love yourself, yeah. you know, and just instead of looking at everything through such a fearful eye, look through, look at someone with kindness and show passion and show love to everyone that you encounter in your life. You know, don't, don't, um, cause I, I remember one time during COVID I ran into this one lady and, um, she seemed so anxious, you know, like she was mad because I got so close to her, right? I was wearing my mask. I was at work, you know, we were, <laughs> and I work at a grocery store. So we're shopping in the aisles and everything's like so compact. And she got so anxious because I reached over to grab something mm. and she was right next to it. And um, she was, she freaked out on me. She was all like, you're getting too close. And I'm like, it, it just reminded me of like, you know, in that moment, I was all like, be quiet, lady. Like, yeah, I got mad, you know, <laughs> but as I uh, left and as I thought about it over time, um, don't don't live in fear, you know, live. Take courage, you know, be strong, be humble, um, show love to others, bring others up. Never try if people look like they're, you know, feeling down, going through something, be the person that you know, gets them out of it, you know? Yeah. That's what I would say. Okay. Man. My boy Juan. <laughs> Hit it up with some good positive information. Sorry. Listeners, hope you made it this far. Hope you had a good time with this episode. Uh I want to give you some positive affirmation, listeners. Thank you for giving us your ears, your time, your ability to share this podcast with everybody or every man that you come across with. Um, I hope this message or this episode touched the hearts of all the people who's listening. Um, Juan, uh, going to give you some positive information. I appreciate you for being the man that you are and yeah. that you are becoming not just by yourself, but your father is shaping you still shaping you up to become the man that you are in God, and in God, God, in God, in God, everything, everything that you looking for and that you working hard for it is going to come your way. Yeah. And ten times and ten to, ten toes down, not ten toes. <laughs> ten times fold. <laughs> ten times fold. There you go. And I appreciate you and I'm yeah. glad I met you in my life. And I just thank you for everything that you do, yeah, man. Of course. Appreciate for, you, yeah, man. Appreciate you, you, for you, me on. I I respect you for who you are. Yeah. 
and everything. And I'm honored to meet you. And that that's that's yeah. that's from through and through yeah. from my heart. So listeners, Shit, here's some positive encouragement. Keep always keep smiling. Stay being you. Stay humble. Stay always stay phenomenal. Keep your head up. Keep God first. Stay prayed up. Everything will be all right. Everything that you're going through, you're going to get through it. Explore nature. Like I said, keep praying. And always face your issues head on, no matter what's going on in your life. And until then, peace, love, and positivity. And we're out. Let's go. One love. <laughs>